All right, guys, we're back to making tanks today. I know this is all you guys want to see, so here's a quick 10-minute rundown of how we made this Hellcat over here, all right? So first of all, as always, we're starting with some references in the background, right? That's the first thing you need to do. If you don't know how to do that, as always, I have a tutorial which shows you how to do that correctly, so go check that out. I'll put the link in the description. And now we're using a cube to shape out the hull of the tank. So we just have to get in side view, and then we have to adjust or have to align the faces and the edges of the cube that we just have the default cube here we have to align that with the uh, uh, blue, uh, blueprint that's what we're using the blueprint for primarily because we can see the dimensions of the tank right so we can get the right length height whatever i'm using some uh, reference images on the side as well on my second screen i didn't put those up because probably i would get a copyright bust or something and then once we get the one side of the tank done we're gonna we're gonna delete one side of the tank and use a mirror modifier and that way we don't have to do everything twice okay anything we do on the, on the right side it's automatically going to be copied on the left side so since a good part of this tank is symmetrical or at least the main body of the tank the hull of the tank is usually symmetrical this is going to come in handy right so we got a mirror modifier and you can see over here uh, we have this mud guard in front of the front wheel on both sides of the tank it's exactly the same so we have a mirror modifier so we don't have to do this twice okay it's just copied to the other side of the tank now, once we are through with uh, with the main shape of the hull, we're going to get to some of the hull details, all right? So let's get busy with this uh, headlight first, all right? You just have to start somewhere. Just pick any detail and just start making that first. It doesn't really matter. So I'm basically just shaping out the frame that I'm going to use, to, uh, and I'm going to shoot that frame, uh, and I'm going to use that to create this little metal cage which is placed around the headlight of the tank, all right? So I'm adding some bevels to make them more round shape. I copy that, then I have these two metal bars, and then I just use some cylinders between these bars to make some more... Some more uh, to make some more bars to make for, to shape this cage around the headlight. I guess that's the point of this is to prevent the headlight from getting busted up by something if the if something hits the tank or something like that. And also just a simple cylinder extruding and scaling the circles to make the headlight itself. All right, and we attach that to the tank using another little simple cylinder. Okay, here's that, and we put that inside the cage, and there is going to be our first headlight finished right there. And of course, we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to duplicate that to the other side. I'm keeping this a separate object from the hull. So this doesn't have the this doesn't have the mirror modifier applied to it. It's a separate object because then I have more control over the shading and whatever. And so I copy that to the other side of the tank manually. And then I just place this cage one more time in the middle. Over here, we're adding some screws with some uh, hexagon circles, hexagonal circles on the mud guards, right? I'm adding some loop cuts here to make this little metal part that sticks out. And they all have some screws on top of it. I don't know what this is for, just to central part or just part of the hull of the tank so now we've uh, we kind of finished up the front part and we're going to move to the top of the tank right here we have these hatches probably for the driver the gunner whatever this is where they get in we have these little doors so we're just taking a plane reshaping it extruding parts of it out to make this little door and now we have some random little details on this uh, hatch like this little handle so we're going to use the same technique that we use for the headlight cage and we just add some more planes and circles and extrude them out just to add some basic shapes to this uh to this um so this little hatch, so it has some more de details, like some little viewports and stuff like that. You can never have enough screws and bolts, so I just add some more little hexagonal circles and they extrude them into little bolts so they can be placed around these little hatches. It's a nice little detail. You can add that anywhere. We also have to add the hinges, and here's how I do that. I just use a cylinder as the, as the base of the hinge, which it probably can pivot around or something like that. Then we're going to add some more random little details around here, like this little uh, other little object. I don't even know what it is. Just the same thing again, just a circle and some cubes reshaping basic shapes and using those to create these little details that I can see here in the uh, blueprint. There's another little viewport, a little exhaust port that I have over here. I saw that in the reference image that I have on the side. So it's like a little box with a little window and there's a pipe sticking out of it, probably some kind of exhaust or maybe air vent for them to have air to breathe. I don't know what to use this for. If somebody knows, if somebody's an expert on the Hellcat, let me know what this is about. Another little shape like that uh, right next to that one. So there's a bunch of this little stuff. It's up to you how much you want to get into making these little, random little details. I make the ones that are clearly visible. I skip some of them because otherwise this would take 10 hours. But this tank here took me about, uh, I think, about four hours to make. And we're going to go back to the front and we're going to add this other little object. I have no idea what this is, but in the picture it looked like a microphone of some sort. So again, if somebody knows what this was used for on a World War II tank, let me know. In the back here, we have some exhaust vents, all right? So we have to lift up the, the back of the tank. We have to extrude that up to make it almost like a pyramid kind of shape. So just some topology games being played in the back here, and we have to make some of these grills. This is some kind of an exhaust system for cooling the engine in the back, I would imagine. We're going to copy one of the details from the front here. We're going to paste it over to the back just to fill out the back with some more random details like this. We're making another little uh, air vent of some sort in the front of the tank 
pretty much the same thing that we made on the other side. Or we make another little grid over it by just extruding individual faces and deleting some of the faces. Then we go over here to the side of the tank where it's also just basic shapes. We're, we're making some cylinders to make these little bars. Again, I have no idea what they are, but they're just placed there. And we got to attach them to the tank with some other basic objects. As you can see, most of this stuff is just very simple shapes, which are kind of reshaped into, into the rough shape of the detail that I can see in the tank in my reference image, but it's not really rocket science. I'm just using cubes and cylinders and stuff. Same thing with this little hook in the front. This is a little bit of a mess to make, but as you can see, it's again, just reshaping a cylinder, reshaping a cube. We're shooting it down, shooting the front part to make it like some kind of tow hook or something. And we had another bolt using a hexagon. Uh, as always, this is, a, this is a good way to add some more detail. In the back, we use a cylinder to make the rear light. Again, just extrusion and scaling and stuff like that. And now I'm going to create the mud guard in the back, pretty much the same technique that I use in the front. I just extrude a plane, uh, we make a little right angle on it, then I add a bevel to make the round part. And I just add some more details by insetting some faces, extruding them out to make this little frame inside and whatnot. It's basically the same. And in the back here, we have another exhaust grill, so uh, we're just going to make that. We're going to make the bars on that using an array modifier. Now let's talk about the turret. All right, first we have to make the ring for the turret. Then we just like, shoot a circle to shape out the turret. We shoot, shoot some parts towards the back to make this little part, which is sticking out of the back. We add some bevels in the back to make it round. And then we inset and extrude inwards uh, this face on top so we can have this little hole where the gun is, where the probably the crew members are, the gunner and all that. Now we're using a cylinder to create this little part on top of the turret where the machine gun is located on the top of the gun, right? So we add a cylinder and we bevel the bottom to make this little round, rounded uh, shape. And then we just continue adding some more random details the same way we did in the hull of the tank, basic shapes. And we're, we're shaping all this different stuff that you can see around your reference image. If you have one, just little hooks and little hatches and little whatever little pieces sticking out of the tank. And we're just adding those all over the place. There's some more little handles on the top here. So we're going to use those, we make some bevels over there, extrude it out and uh, bevel it again to make it round and smooth. And we can just duplicate a lot of this stuff and place it on other parts of the turret just to add some more detail. Again, here's the same technique that we used to make the, the headlight cage in the front of the tank. We add a simple, uh, a th simple thin shape, then we extrude it out to add some thickness. And then we bevel the, the edges again to make it a circular kind of like a tube, like a, like a metal bar, round metal bar, let's say, which goes around the turret of the tank. Now we're going to make the gun, okay? So we're using a sphere, a quarter of a sphere, duplicating it to the other side. This is what we're going to use to create the mantlet, all right? So we connect those two. We have this little kind of a capsule shape, like a half of a capsule or something. And we're going to place it at the front of the tank. And we have this little other metal surface on the front, which, which is the actual uh, part where the gun sticks out of. All right. As you can see, we need to make a circular hole. We need to extrude that inwards and make another hole in there and add some uh, holes for some screws and stuff like that. But this is where we're going to place the gun of the tank. All right. As you can see, we're adding some more bolts using some hexagons into these holes that we created around the main gun hole, around the main mantlet. And we're just going to join those together and parent them to the to the mantlet. So then we're placing a circle into this hole and extruding it outwards. Obviously, this is just the basic cylindrical shape of the gun. And then in the front of the gun, we extrude it. We insert another face and then we extrude that. It's going to be a hole inside the gun, right? the barrel. Now, in the back of the turret, they have some spare uh, uh, tank tracks placed over there, like five or six of them placed in the back of the turret, I guess. So if one of the turret tracks, if one of the tracks gets busted, they have some more in the back of the turret. They can just take them and put them and replace some of the tracks, right? And now the sweetest part, we're gonna make some wheels. All right, so again, a simple cylinder. Again, you can see that I'm just using a basic shape and just some tools to, to reshape that into whatever shape I need. In this case, a cylinder is used to make a to make a, the, the first wheel, right? So we're just extruding that left and right, inwards, outwards, we're adding some bevels here and there, as you can see over here. And then we're going to add the central part, which attaches the wheel to the axle. All right, we're going to extrude that outwards again. And there are some more details here, like there's little four things that sticks out, stick out of the this central part. And we add some more screws to that as some details. As you can see, most of this stuff, I'm just repeating the same stuff I did before. And I'm just putting it on a different place because most of the details are the same stuff, right? Uh, another little bolt here, which is a little bit larger than the other ones. And we just put place that around the wheel. And once we make the first wheel, we can just duplicate that as many times as we need. In this case, we have, what, five or six wheels? We can just duplicate this a couple of times and create all the other wheels. Then there's a slightly different wheel, which is a sprocket over here. So in this case, I think we needed about uh, 14 edges on our circle. And then we use those 14 edges to extrude the little, uh, the little teeth of this, uh, of this sprocket. If you want to see in more detail how I make uh, tank tracks, tank wheels and sprockets and all that, I have a separate video, which is, uh, which is made specifically to talk about modeling, 
and rigging and animating tank tracks all right so i'll put the link for that in the description as well there's a lot of uh, there's a lot more detailed explanations about how to do this if you're interested in uh, learning how to do that so once we got the first half of this sprocket done we can just duplicate that to the other side and now we have two sides of this pocket so the tracks can nicely fall between them we have these other little tension wheels that go above the main wheels all right so again we're just using a circle to extrude that out to shape it out this is just like a cylindrical shape and just extrusion and scaling and some bevels to create this little wheel and we copy that a couple of times because there's four of those keeping the tension on the tracks right keeping the tracks from falling down too low and touching the tracks on the, from the top again now we took one of the tracks from that we created on the back of the turret and we placed that we're going to use that obviously as as our tracks as our, one of our track links so we're going to just use an array modifier later and a curve modifier to to wrap that around our wheels okay so we already have a we already have a curve as you can see over here and again if you don't know how to make tracks correctly I, again this the same tutorial that i mentioned earlier also shows you how to do that with a curve and array modifier over here is just a quick uh, a quick time lapse of how i did that right so i just use an array modifier and I wrap it around the curve and then i'm using an empty i'm parenting every part every uh, wheel and every track to this empty so that i have more control in separating all these many different objects which make the tracks i can separate those from the hull of the tank so if i want to do something with the hull of the tank or if i want to select all the tracks and track links and wheels separately i can do that by just selecting the empty and moving it to the side and i can play with it on the on the side right without having to select everything manually and you know, all that stuff right and we just parent that to the tank and we duplicate all these tracks and wheels to the other side so we have tracks and wheels on both sides is what i'm trying to say and that pretty much finishes up our project and here's a final little overview any questions you guys have anything you want me to break down in some more detail just let me know in the comments and we'll make another tutorial thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one